Okay, thank you, Manuel, for the introduction. Um, how it works. And let me start from saying thanks to organizers for the invitation and for this choice of this wonderful place that we all met here. And uh, yes, I will speak today about the breaking wave description in a depth average model. And around this project, I have uh, I'll collaborate with all of these researchers. So I will mostly speak today about our work with Gaëlle Richard from Grenoble, uh, where we derived a model for the breaking waves uh, in the depth average uh, context. But I also will give some details about the PhD uh, project of Yan Chong Ung, who is doing his PhD in, at Lama, under my supervision and supervision of Julian Shusha, also from Grenoble, who is uh, a specialist of sediment transport uh, modeliz modelization. And in the middle here, you can find the Toulouse team that was already introduced by Van Song in his talk on Monday. And let me just remind you that Toulouse is, a, is an open source uh, software for the shallow water uh, description. And uh, so why, why all of them are here? Because one of the X, one of the direction of this PhD project, is to include the breaking waves in the Toulouse solver. And uh, in order to make this uh, logger relevant, <laughs> and uh, because for now it's just a breaking wave, uh, sorry, just shallow water description. And as you probably uh, saw already, okay, sorry, I will speak about this later. Uh, but let me just explain to you what is the mathematical context for this uh, wave propagation on the free surface. This model we saw a lot of times this week, so the free surface incompressible Euler equation, which has a I wrote in this form for the velocity field of three components and uh, pressure under the action of gravity. And uh, as you already see, as we know, we need to impose a kinematic and bi dynamic boundary condition on the uh, boundaries of the domain. And uh, the complexity of the problem, the first one is that you know that the domain itself, where your PD is uh, imposed, is unknown. So that's why we need all the construction. And that's why this is not reasonable to think that this model will be uh, of reach in the operational context. Because it's, uh, it's very precise, it gives a nice result on the three surface propagation, free surface propagation waves. But the problem is in imper operational context, the simulation one sound show you for the large scale of time, for a couple of hours, even a couple of days, uh, it's we are unable to re resolve all this three-dimensional velocity field. And uh, uh, it still gives a very good result. So we'll probably see the very nice poster of uh, Alain and uh, Emmanuel just outside here. Whereas, uh, not exactly this uh, model, but Navier Stokes equation, where the viscosity is taken into account, solved uh, for the breaking waves. And this gives you a very beautiful free surface that we can describe. Uh, and uh, in operational context, we couldn't allow to ourselves to this description because I spoke to Alan, he told me that uh, for the around four seconds of uh, propagation, he needs two weeks to calculate this. So in order to see just a general propagation in the big, uh, large scale and for a long time, uh, we, will, we, we prefer to go for the uh, depth average model. But of course, if we gain somewhere, we have to lose. And what we will lose? It's a, uh, uh, there is no colors? Okay, don't, no, don't worry. I, just what we will, to, what we will uh, lose, it's a precision of the surface. So we will describe only the depth average surface. That's only where, where what we can do, because in the depth average context, we cannot allow to ourselves to have a free surface which is not a graph of a function. So this will be something like this. And we already spoke with Alan that we actually uh, able, we will be able to compare our depth average model to his simulation in order to really see how in numerical simulations this depth average surface will be superposed on, on the calculation of Alan and Emmanuel. 
Okay, so the motivation is here. We want to calculate fast without enormous computational cost, and we allow to, to ourselves to be not that precise in the description. So what about the depth average model? There is uh, several of them, which we already see this week and we discussed. Uh, and uh, you know, and we saw this uh, very important shallowness and nonlinearity parameters in the de model derivation. So uh, I will denote the shallowness parameter mu, which is delta in the Robin lectures, uh, delta squared, as a, a characteristic wave uh, water depths over characteristic wavelengths squared. Uh, and nonlinearity parameters show you how the amplitude of waves is related to the characteristic wave depths. And so in the <coughs> hydrostatic pressure uh, hypothesis with a constant velocity over the vertical, so I suppose <coughs> here you can see that x can be a double two-dimensional variable uh, denoting the just the horizontal part. And uh, so I suppose that velocity does not depend on the vertical, meaning that the column of water is moving with a constant speed. All the column, but it depends on x. Okay? And in this approximation, first model you will have, it's a very well-known model, nonlinear shallow water equation, which can be derived as an asymptotic model with respect to this mu parameter. And uh, you can recognize the equation you all know. And the non-hydrostatic pressure here will be equal just to zero because only the hydrostatic pressure is taken into account. We saw this in the Robin lectures and in Katrine lectures as well. Uh, so in the first order, no known hydrostatic terms appear. And this model is, uh, so there is no assumption on the nonlinearity parameter, it's a fully nonlinear model, and this has a type of hyperbolic structure. So this is uh, something that can uh, produce shocks in the finite time. Then if you go further on the uh, asymptotic analysis, you will have a class of Boussinesque model where the non-hydrostatic pressure can be written in the different ways. And uh, finally, if you go again further, so this one is uh, weakly nonlinear because there is an assumption on epsilon of the order of epsilon, uh, dispersive model, and the non-hydrostatic non pressure can be written in a different way. And in sergrin nagdi model, no assumption is did anymore on the epsilon. It's a fully nonlinear model, but weakly dispersive. So no assumption on epsilon. And non-hydrostatic pressure can be written in the closed form. Sorry, I, I forgot to delete this. It's, it's actually the same, just I will note the h dot is material derivative of h with respect to the flow. So if the flow is, is two-dimensional, is the will be a gradient of h with respect to horizontal part. And if it's one-dimensional, because I will pr mostly speak about the one-dimensional model, uh, this will be just a uh, sorry, uh, derivative of h with respect to x. So this model is dispersive and fully nonlinear. And uh, for the justification and derivation of so such type of model, I, I planned to uh, uh, cited to, to reference to the David Land book, but now I can also reference to Katrin course, so I, I suppose that we will see the Bushinesque derivation there done in this context. So, okay, uh, now about the validity of this whole model in the description of the water wave propagation, we can uh, compare the numerical results with the experiment and to see and we can see how it's uh, related to the real physical experiment and what we see is that the dispersive properties are very important in this zone it's uh, very related to the simulation one sun showed us where the uh, shallow water equation developed a shock but uh, the dispersive wave propagates a, a nice solitary wave or nice uh, regular solution uh, so these uh, are very important in order to describe uh, uh, in good ways the amplitude of waves. And this is actually what is very important to be uh, sure to write, to, to, to have a right description of the in an in, uh, sorry <laughs> flooding zone. Uh, and then uh, what is interesting that is uh, in near shore region in the surf zone, the shallow water model where no hydrostatic pressure uh, is not taken into account is also quite valid. So what the, the problem is, is here where the breaks 
breaking of wave appears because of the dissipation which occurs into the in the breaking. So, and I w what I've done uh, this week just to show you because uh, it se seems to me uh, interesting to see and I never ask myself this question but just uh, after some discussion with colleagues here I decided to, to do th this stuff. So if we take a look, so now if I go back to the validity of the model, there is a dispersive model, the one Sir Green like this, I, I will stick to this one because it is fully nonlinear, you don't need to have some assumption on the wave amplitude. And uh, this is shallow water. So what will happen if you just propagate everywhere dispersive model and what will happen if you propagate just everywhere with a shallow water equation, whether it will stick to the reality. And the idea is to, uh, to consider the same experiment I will consider with the new model uh, to compare with the results so in the experiment, uh, the solitary wave propagate over the constant slope beach, and all these lines, it's a measurement. So you can imagine the data from the experiment, it's quite messy, but uh, everywhere I have a time series of the free surface. So in time I can compare everywhere, and I just choose uh, three points. They're not exactly the same for shallow water and for uh, for green nagdi, because I, I took this one for green nagdi, the shallow water is some, some, somewhere here. But what we get? So, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> as I said, that I just did it this week for you, it was a little bit quick. Just uh, please look only on the free surface, there is no comparison in the velocity. Okay, it's just a superposition of the free surface in time series. So it's x is fixed and time is evaluating. And what why I speak about the, it's not a problem of numerical resolution because we see how it propagates the, the velocity is uh, we we access to this is a variable of prob but of of our problem. But uh, in the experiment, uh, I need to calibrate the exactly when they start to recorder. And this is uh, quite tricky, and I didn't have time to do this. So just look. Lo let's look just on the free surface. What I mean by velocity is that probably there is some uh, small uh, phase uh, shift in the propagation. This I need to double check. Okay, if you're interested, we can see it if I have time till the end of the week. But in the shallow water equation. What you see is that, that that's exactly what we saw in the simulation of Fansan. So the black is an experimental curve since you have uh, this uh, small oscillation, and the the uh, red one is a numerical code. Uh, yeah, and so uh, you see that the shallow water is in one sound simulation. It's developed a shock wave, and it's not corresponding to the reality. There is too much dissipation, uh, nature, natural dissipation through the shock, and uh, we don't have enough uh, energy in the wave to have uh, this big amplitude. But what is interesting to see is that finally, in the end of the channel, it's not that bad. So probably here the non-hydrostatic. Uh, pressure is not important anymore and this sticks well. Uh, however, you see that it's not propagates the solitary wave, it's because there is no solution like solitary wave for shallow water equation. For uh, whether for the green nagdi uh, solid uh, green equation, there is a solution of the such a type that we saw in the morning in the Robin lecture, for example. So we can construct it, and we can construct it explicitly. So we can in, uh, initialize in our numerical data directly with a solution, and you see that it's uh, propagate quite well at the beginning. But then, in the end, so the in the end of the channel, there is no dissipation in the Sergrinak equation. There is no any viscous terms, uh, and so we uh, what we get it's uh, too much amplitude and it dis doesn't dissipate. So in here, the, the simulation just stops because of the I choose uh, the channel length as 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 it is like this. Okay, so it uh, it's not a solution to use one or another. Uh, it will not work. Uh, but what it's not uh, like we didn't know how to do at all. 
there is a solution. The shallow water equation exists uh, for decades. The green nugd equation as well. So there is a solution how to how to do so. I wanted to just uh, uh, describe a little bit of state of art. It's not exhaustive uh, at all, but uh, the <coughs> different numerical strategy that we can describe to in order to have this uh, description of water wave uh, can be divided into two group of method. Uh, the first one is, I call it, okay, it's just my, my terminology, artificial dispers dissipative terms, and the uh, green uh, non-linear shallow water wo model or Bucinesque equation, they put additional terms empirically into momentum equation, or convec even there is a works where they, could con they put convective term in the mass equation. So uh, supposing that there is a loss of mass when breaking occurs. So probably it's maybe true, but the mass is not conserved anymore in those type of model. So this is a work which goes back to, to this community, for this different group. Uh, and the other method, which is a, a little bit more recent, is a hybrid method or switching method. And this one is uh, quite interesting idea. Uh, it's uh, idea is uh, to drop dispersive term when you decide to drop them and switch model from green nagdi which was propagating nicely uh, with a solitary wave and some uh, point you switch to the uh, non-linear shallow water equation and this develops a shock solution and this describes your uh, breaking waves. Okay, so in the beginning of the propagation, we solve the green nugd equation, and then when we decide precisely where the breaking occurs, we switch to the nonlinear shallow water equation and develops a shock, and this gives a good agreement with the um, experiment. But the, uh, all of the art of this method is to correctly define the moment when you need to drop or add additional terms. And this, uh, okay, I never tried by myself, but uh, from colleagues who work on this type of method, this can be quite tricky and uh, case by case for the different experiment, you need to turn a lot of parameters, like around three or four, uh, because some breaking criteria can be um, different and they can be um <coughs> based on the free surface gradient or free surface angle and you need to measure everything like this and when you have a lot of wave which come in it's difficult to distinguish between which waves is already here which is breaks which is which one is which one actually so this is a uh, critical point of this uh, method but what i need to mention it's uh, when you have a good parameters it sticks very well to the experiment so now, uh, the idea for the present work was already developed in the other framework and the other context. Uh, it's actually what I showed you that the column of water in the classical model, it's propagate with constant speed. But uh, this, uh, it's not actually true anymore. Probably it's true at the beginning of the propagation, uh, but it's not true anymore in the case of the breaking. So um, the idea, which is was developed in the other context, is to actually take into account some fluctuation of uh, velocity field with respect to uh, to the mean velocity field. So we don't suppose anymore that velocity depends only on horizontal uh, part, but uh, there is some fluctuation. And the, uh, this fluctuation, we will not, okay, we can suppose that there is some, some profile for this fluctuation and we know exactly how, how to do this. Even for the breaking waves, there was a, we can su suppose a polynomial profile and then we have a coefficient of the polynomial to tune in order to have a good breaking moment and a good uh, breaking position. Uh, but uh, the, the idea is to leave it as it is, arbitrary, uh, goes to Tishukov who wrote the first paper about this uh, this uh, type of approach in 2007. Uh, in, in 2D hyperbolic context, uh, he proposed uh, the analogy between uh, gas dynamic and shallow water regime, but shear of shallow water regime. So the shear comes from this new uh, new fluctuation, which will be taken into account. Uh, then, in dispersive and cons but conservative framework, 
um, there is some works we are taking into account for the vorticity. I, I will explain why taking this into account uh, give you taking into account the vorticity. We will do the calculation together if I have time. Uh, but the idea is to uh, to not uh, consider any more rotational flow, but take uh, vorticity into account. And uh, in those one paper and uh, this one, which I did with uh, Pascal Noble, uh, the vorticity is just conserved. So you take a rotational from, from the velocity equation, and it gives you the evolution of the vorticity, but it's not produced. So if it's not in the system, it will not be produced. So the, uh, to produce the vorticity, we need to add some physical uh, phenomena in the model, not only dissipation, but al also the creation of vorticity. But here I just listed the, the work of the uh, of Sergei Gavrilyuk, Gael Richard, and uh, Ksenia Ivanova, who, uh, starting from this uh, idea, develop this idea in the different uh, physical context, adding uh, some additional physics like dissipation uh, in order to describe hydraulic drums in the uh, context of the shallow water model uh, like a Saint-Venant equation but taking into account for this fluctuation and also Sergei Gavriluk uh, with uh, some Russian quarters will was uh, uh, applied this to, to describe a breaking waves. So just a little bit uh, to say about these uh, two works. Uh, so this is an uh, image from this work on the hydraulic jumps. So taking into account for this fluctuation and dissipation uh, together will give you the results in the line, solid line here. I, I, I hope you see this. It's quite small probably. Uh, the point is an experiment and the uh, small line uh, with um, uh, not solid line, sorry. Uh, this is a nonlinear shallow water equation. So you can see the difference between taking this into account with dissipation, give you the, uh, uh, sorry, I mis make a mistake and I just realized this, it's not for hydraulic drums, it's uh, for all waves, okay, but it's not this paper, sorry about this, I just saw that there is no <laughs> constant depth after the jump and it shocked me, sorry, 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 it's a roll wave, so roll waves, it's a in kind of instability on the and you have a uh, constant flow on the roll uh, on the inclined plane, you have the instability which is developed, and this is a sketch of the one of the wave of this instability. Sorry, sorry about this. Yeah. So, uh, but in, in both contexts, the theory, this uh, approach works. Okay, we can take into account for the fluctuation and have a nice description of the shock. Uh, not that uh, violent, let's say, as uh, with. Uh, 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 shallow water equation. Okay, uh, and for the breaking waves in this work, uh, Sergei Gavriluk he exploited the same strategy where uh, we can produce the vorticity due to the shock. Okay, this is an important remark. In all these works, the production of this uh, uh, component uh, is due to the appearing of the shock. Because when you derive a model, you follow more or less the same procedures that I will show you. Uh, you will, uh, in the hydraulic jumps and the roll waves context, you will obtain a hyperbolic model. And this, uh, the, the quantity which is related to this uh, fluctuation plays the role of entropy on the shock. So it's produced, when model produced a shock, this is produced, vorticity is produced. Okay, so this is the idea. And in the, uh, for the breaking wave description, what uh, was done in this paper, that they considered two layers of water. First one where you have hyperbolic system where there is a shock and uh, this quantity vorticity can be created. And uh, on the top of the other uh, layer where the dispersive uh, model is solved. So that's how they can uh, describe the, uh, the breaking waves and that's how they can create vorticity. Because when there is a shock, there is a relation on the shock, ranking you going to a relation which guarantees that there was a quantity which will be produced and this quantity is related to this fluctuation. When you are in the uh, dispersive context, there is no shock anymore. Uh, we don't see them at least in the numerical uh, simulation 
and uh, so there is no production of vorticity, we need to do something else, and this is the um, topic of my presentation. Okay, let's go now to the derivation. I will not give a lot of details, but if you're interested, don't hesitate to come and see me. Uh, so the first thing we will do, and as I said, we need to produce vorticity in the dispersive framework. We cannot to do it by ourselves, by shocks, by something else. So we need to account in for some physical effects. And the idea of this paper, which we, uh, of this model, which we derived of this Gaël Richard, was uh, to introduce uh, filter in decomposition, where here there is a uh, velocity field which takes into account um, mean field velocity plus large scale turbulence. So it's not a Reynolds decomposition, but it's a filter. And so the large scales are here, and then there is a residual part, which is uh, isotropic turbulence, small scale turbulence, and this one can uh, uh, be actually will be modeled by uh, visco uh, turbulent viscosity hypothesis. So these two terms comes if I consider Navier's Stokes equation. So this is a kinematic viscosity. This is like you, the one you know, which comes from the mean field and uh, uh, large scale turbulence. And actually, this one will be neglected quite fast because uh, we consider the inviscid floor. We don't need really to take into account in, the in, in here for the viscosity. But uh, the residual part tensor, which related to this one, so it's uh, we can model this by turbulent viscosity hypothesis. It's actually the same how you obtain the Laplacian here. This um, deviatoric part of residual stress tensor, if you model it is with uh, turbulent viscosity, you will just have a turbulent, uh, uh, turbulent viscosity in front of the Laplacian. Okay, like like the same in the same like is is here, and this one is precise. Is is uh, pressure? It's a how to say? Sorry, it's very important to us because this what was this term is will produce the vorticity for us. Okay, so now this is a free surface Euler equation only in two D in two D context. We integrate it over the depths from bottom to the free surface, and what we will we'll obtain. Uh, so the mass equation, we saw it's already this integration in the lectures this week. Uh, we will have exact uh, mass equation, uh, mass conservation, where H is a uh, free surface. Okay, tilde here is just written for the uh, non-dimensional variables, and I do the same scales as uh, Robin did in the first lecture. Okay, um, but this is just the details. What you need to see is that this is a mass equation coming from the divergence u equal to zero. When I integrated it from the boundary, from the top, from the bottom to the to the free surface, and this equation is e exact. So don't, there is no terms of order asymptotic <coughs> with respect to the asymptotic parameter. But then uh, we integrate also the momentum equation, and here we will see. Uh, the appearance of these uh, terms, which is are of order mu square. And so now, as I told you, we consider the big U, which is not dependent on Z, plus a small fluctuation, which dependent on Z. And they will, ap they will appear here. And then we will have also the non-hydrostatic pressure terms. Sorry, it was NH before, but it's non-hydrostatic pressure terms. Uh, with the uh, order mu square as well. So, um, and in order to find this term, the closure for this term, we integrate the OZ momentum equation, and this gives you uh, us the definition of this, this term. And this is exactly what happened for green nag equation. It's how you can derive it. It's not the only way, but it's how you can derive this. Uh, and you see, if I neglect these terms, this will be uh, neglected. And uh, if we forgot about this one also, what you have is just a shallow water part. Okay, so now uh, we, we introduce a new variable for this uh, quantity. And uh, this new variable we will call it entropy. Uh, and it's uh, needed to have a new equation because this can be closed with respect to OZ equation, but this one we need to uh, find the closure. And how to find this? It's uh, use we can use the energy equation. 
Because when we don't take into account these fluctuations, the energy equation is just a consequence of two or three equations of mass and momentum. We can derive it, it's a consequence. But now since we have a new variable, we have another equation, we can use it. And finally, we will have this system uh, written here. So just to show you, so this was uh, the, the approach. Uh, probably it's uh, a little bit technical, but uh, don't hesitate to ask if you want. And uh, if we uh, see in the beginning of this model, it's just a shallow water part. Uh, then this is a green nugget equation. So this is the part I show you, which comes from non-hydrostatic pressure. That it terms here. This is. Uh, uh, second order material derivative of H. So I w the one I, I noted dot before, but it's the same notation. We can note it. It's like a, a complete derivative, full derivative in time. And then there is a new, sorry, <laughs> there is a new uh, variable phi here, and this one comes from energy equation. Okay, so then uh, there is a lot of uh, problem to in order to pr produce a good uh, numerical there is a lot of issue for this uh, uh, term to discretize good in well way this term because this is material derivative so you need to see that there is a second order deriv derivative in time and in space of h and since it's in the divergence there is a set third order derivative we need to discretize them and uh, if you're familiar with this <laughs> type of equation you you know that this Im implies that you have an elliptic step to e you need to invert the elliptic operator and uh, in the operational context where the domain is large, it can be a very big matrix to invert. And, uh, okay, but about numerical strategy, I, can, I, I think it can be another lecture for one hour. I will not stop a lot of here. But we, we will use the strategy proposed by Limitaye and Sergei Gavriluk, uh, which propose a change of variable uh, to, a, to, to u, new variable k, uh, which gives you a hyperbolic system for this H, HK, HV. And hyperbolic system can be solved by Godunov type, sc type scheme of second order with muzzle reconstruction, etc., with Runge Kuta second order time discretization. But then, to, in order to have your new uh, updated variable v values of velocity, you need to find the U again, and so you need to uh, have your elliptic step to invert. So in the operational context, this part, in 1D, it's not very important, but in the operational context, this part takes around 90% of your time step. So, and if we can be able to, to remove this, we will be really happy. Okay, so now about the numerical simulation, we know the story, thanks to Robin. <laughs> So uh, <laughs> this is Russell, who is following the solitary wave. Okay, it's quite small here, but uh, on the horse. Now we know the original story from original source. And uh, we are happy about the existence of this solution because it's for us, uh, in numerical scheme, we can test our code with this exact solution. And uh, from mathematical point of view, in the face portrait, the existence of a solitary wave corresponds to this uh, very... I, I found this very nice to find this homoclinic or, uh, orbit in the face portrait. So this is a solitary wave solution and inside you have a periodic solution. And for this model which we derived, this solution can be written explicitly. So we can write it and we can uh, test our code. Now here I just compare the solitary wave for green Nagdi system and for new system with this new va variable n strophy phi. And you see that for, for the same fruit number, so for the same velocities, they are a little bit different. Uh, but we can, uh, in code, uh, make a, a propagation uh, and test the order of the code, which is, uh, as expected, a round of two. So now we are ready to use this code to, to compare with the experimental data, uh, because we are, we are sure now that it works as we want. So now I back to the same uh, experimental comparison, but with a new model. As I told you, there is a lot of data for different amplitude, for different age zero. Uh, there is 54 test case, different test case, which we can take into account. Uh, and what I wanted you to see is the evolution of this new anstrophy phi. Okay. Uh, 
now we will see the propagation. So the solitary wave propagates. Don't put attention on the, these two curves just here. So the entropy is small, but then it grows very fast. So the turbulent viscosity terms, which is uh, written in closed form uh, in the system, we can we can see that uh, it reduces the entropy and there is a dissipation in the system. And now we can compare the uh, the the free surface. But what's important to see that at the beginning of the propagation, so this is this graph I need to maybe explain a little bit. So this is a maximum of uh, entropy phi that I showed you in time, uh, in space, sorry, for, for each uh, time fixed, but uh, plotted with respect to position of waves. So at the beginning, when wave it's wave it's the, at the beginning of channel, this propagates with uh, not a lot of ent the very small very small values of entropy, and then uh, this breaking is uh, plotted with respect to experimental dat data. So I know that it breaks here, and if you uh, track the maximum of this entropy, which corresponds to the vorticity, we will see it in in, s in several minutes. You see that there is a production very strong production o o on the vorticity. However, uh, when epsilon nonlinearity parameter is uh, bigger uh, than the is bigger than the first one, uh, we have a production of the entropy a little bit before in the breaking. So this case is just perfect because the production of entropy characterizes the breaking position directly. Because in my numerical simulation, I don't know when wave will, will break. I know this only because I have the experiment, but when it's a real case, that not a real case, I don't know when it will break. And having this, it's very good because it's showing you where it's break. But for the other model, for the other uh, test cases, we see that it's developed, let's say, a little bit too much of vorticity and introduce the dissipation of the system that don't we don't want. And so what we did in the first work, it's not, uh, I will criticize it in a minute, but it's not perfect. Uh, we put some threshold in the model for, so when phi reach some uh, phi zero um, threshold, uh, we activate this equation uh, this uh, dissipative terms, so it's more or less like activation of dissipative terms uh, in the first uh, group of methods that I present you. But uh, now it's uh, based on the new variable, which is a variable of your model. So this is quite nice. Uh, and after the threshold is reached, the dissipation is put into the system. And okay, now that's how it works. Uh, to say to to show to you what are the parameters I I, I uh, used. So this is the expression of the turbulent viscosity field. So the turbulent viscosity it's um, uh, something that we need to model. And uh, with respect to dimension of the var variables we have, we can construct this this uh, quantity. And why it's uh, h and uh, phi only? Uh, because we want to conserve the Galilean invariance of the system, so we don't uh, we we are not able to use u, for example. It's only h and uh, phi, which can be written here. And r is here since it's. Uh, I, I Viscosity, in some sense, it's something like a uh, Reynolds number, but analogous Reynolds number, not the real physical one. Okay, this is empirical constant that we need to, to choose. And this, there is a dissipation as well, uh, which is written in this form. And here is a constant in front of the dissipation. What is very uh, interesting, and we are happy about this, this value we take universal, the one which was tested on the, a lot of uh, experiment with roll waves. So this constant for the breaking waves in the shoaling zone and for the roll waves, it's the same constant. So what we need finally to tune is this Reynolds number corresponding to turbulent viscosity hypothesis and the threshold. Okay, when? Yes. Yeah, sorry, it's uh, just an artifact of this presentation, but yeah. So psi and phi, you can see that it's the same, but the definition of phi, it's 1 over h3 
integral of the perturbation um, square from bottom to the to the top okay and this will we will see that it's vorticity square that's homogeneous to vorticity square okay in the model so uh, the idea is that we propagate with Sir Grignard equation without any dissipation like it is like it was at the beginning in my test case but then we add the new equation sorry about p and, and phi uh, this equation is solved we know which value uh, reach by psi which is exactly the same okay sorry i will do it like this this is psi and when psi reach a threshold then the entropy is uh, uh, activated in the model okay so that's why i have both of them but uh, they are exactly the same just you need to see that this don't have any uh, effect on this system this is just a green nugget equation but then the threshold is reached we change the system for the new one and there is an answer for there is a dissipation and that's how breaking appears okay don't hesitate if there is an any other question <laughs> Okay, so this is uh, some uh, parameters we choose. Uh, the yeah. The official definition of breaking for in the experiment. Let's let's talk about the experiment. They noted this moment when they see some bubbles on the fluid surface. So they just put a mark on the floor, saying, "Okay, now I see the bubbles. This breaks." But in our model, we defined it as a moment when you have your wave which is climbing to the slope and the first moment when it's dissipated, the amplitude is dissipated. In the classical... Yeah. Sorry? Amplitude became smaller. Hmm. But in the in the depth average model, we can just do this. We don't have uh, the the we don't have the the nice surface as Alan did in his poster, uh, which is not a graph anymore, and we cannot allow ourselves this approach because of the time con time, time cost numerical time cost. So we need to do with with this, uh, yeah. And so now I compare the time series with experiment. So x again is fixed, and this is the time evolution of the surface and the fixed position. And we see that it uh, works quite well. Uh, so I reach uh, where I need. You can see probably from here, this 0060101. So this is uh, uh, still uh, increasing, and then here from here to here it's decrease so this means that the breaking occurs okay so this is the first comparison and this is a really comparison we are proud of because this one don't need a threshold the threshold is zero okay the only one model is propagate it breaks if we do nothing we touching anything and this is for those who are familiar with the switching model this is quite incredible because you always need to tune a lot of stuff. Here we just have two parameters in this work. Uh, and then for the threshold, it's m a little bit more complicated. Here there is a threshold. So we need to decide this is a Sir Grignard equation, Sir Grignard equation, Sir Grignard equation. And then we activate the entropy dissipation. And d this dissipate, it gives us a good result. Okay? So this is a uh, comparison. And the last, uh, now I will switch to the new model, which is a project of my PhD student, Yan Chun Ung. Uh, I told you a lot about, not a lot, but <laughs> I have uh, mentioned this uh, very difficult numerical issue to discretize the uh, high order derivatives. And uh, as we already saw in the presentation of Van San, there is an approach which allows us to, d to avoid this elliptic step. So how we can do this? It's mostly the same uh, condition. So we take into account 
for the hydrostatic, non-hydrostatic pressure, and this uh, fluctuation. So we exactly in the same uh, scheme that we have for our model, but in the derivation. So I go back to the same slide, more mostly same slide we have. Uh, this is was a new variable. We introduce phi is here. Uh, but non-hydrostatic pressure was uh, written with respect to OZ equation. Is this what gives you the high order derivatives? And if you want to avoid this, but you just call it by a new variable P, and using again the pressure, uh, the, uh, the en energy equation, you can derive a new equation for P, and you also need will need to introduce the depth average value of vertical velocity as a new variable, and the uh, derivation of this type of model. So here you will have it uh, with this one and this definition. This will give you an equation for big W, uh, capital W. And uh, this will just be denoted by a new uh, variable, capital P. And then you just add the equation for energy, and this gives you the equation for P and for phi as well. Um, OK, so this is just how we uh, uh, depth average and taking the mu square asymptotics of the energy equation, but the details may be not very important. And now when you see this will be a new model, which exactly correspond with dispersive properties and with, uh, with uh, taking into account this vertical fluctuation of the velocity uh, to the one I showed you in the beginning of the presentation. But uh, there is a new variables and this model is hyperbolic. So instead of having the high order dispersive terms, I have two additional equations and you can see this uh, just formally, if A goes to infinity, uh, W relax to this quantity. If you put it in this equation, you will find the value of pi. And if you put pi here, you will recover Sir Greenacht equation. Exactly the same non-hydrostatic terms. Okay, this is formally. And if you have phi, you will recover a model that I showed you before. Because the, 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 the important play is just around this term. This one is the same, and the equation is more or less the same. But if you want to do it rigorously, you need to ask Kaula in one son. <laughs> so this I don't know how to do. And also we can uh, analyze dispersion relation of the new model and to see that uh, when A, this relaxation parameter A here, uh, goes to infinity, we can uh, introduce this parameter as a uh, velocity of sound, uh, speed, speed of sound. Uh, and so in this uh, regime, we see that uh, when A is big, we recover the Sergrinagdi dispersion relation. Okay. Sorry, I, what was, I forgot to say is that it's based on the Gael Richard work who w derived this without entropy. Okay, so the, the, the idea to have uh, the new variable P and new variable W, it's a model we saw in the Van Sound presentation on Monday. Uh, and so they add the entropy uh, just to check that we obtain what, what uh, we expected. This was the work of the first year of the PhD project. And so now we can compare the new model. No, no elliptic step, just a hyperbolic model. And this, I don't remember if it's the case uh, where the criteria, the threshold is applied, but there is a one case, the same as in the first work, you just uh, solve the hyperbolic equation and you have your wave breaks. This is just incredible to me because I work a lot on this and I know that can it can be struggle. And now what we also can, uh, uh, the threshold in the first model, I didn't, took a lot of attention on this, put a lot of attention on this, but in the first model the threshold was uh, not constant for test case. We choose it with respect to initial nonlinearity of waves. And this is, <laughs> you can imagine this is bad, because when you are here and you just want to see your wave breaks, you don't know what comes, where it comes from, especially when there is a, a lot of waves coming, there is one which breaks, we don't know. And this, so this is not operational of, the, this is a critic of our first model. And now what we found that we can uh, use actually 
a new uh, non-dimensional threshold, which is constant for all test cases. So this is quite nice. So then we decided, okay, I didn't put it. Then we decided to have another, because what I showed you, it's just test cases where there is only one wave. It's uh, nice to follow, you know, where the maximum is, and it's in numerical simulation, you can follow your wave. When you have a lot of waves, uh, which breaks, and you have this uh, uh, increasing and decreasing and stuff like this, it's not possible anymore to follow waves. And so we applied this criteria to the one um, um, test case where you have a lot of waves, and uh, for now it's not working very well, that's why I put it, and uh, didn't put it on the slide. Uh, but so we are working on the robust breaking criteria now, and actually the, the continuity of this PhD project, since there is a Julian Chouchat, uh, it's to put a sediment transport model with this model of waves. Okay, I will stop here, thank you for your attention.